Hi, welcome to lesson 6.1, Introduction to Vectors. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the basics of vectors, some of the definitions, some of the terminology, and how these things work into the real life setting. Uh, so first a couple of definitions. Uh, a vector is a quantity having both and I guess I should choose a pen here, uh, both magnitude and direction. And a scalar quantity is one which only has magnitude. Like a scalar would be something like a constant. Uh, a vector is a mathematical object with both and, just as we've previously stated, magnitude, so the length of the vector, and direction, which is slope or gradient. For those of us from the international world, there's a beginning point and an ending point of the geometrically uh, represented vector. So the beginning point is also perhaps called the initial point. Uh, it is also called the tail. And the terminal point or the ending point uh, is also called the head. And of course, we can see that it has magnitude and direction. Now the direction is kind of, there's a couple of co um, concepts with the direction. A, the direction would be, it's heading off in that direction, generally to the right. But direction also indicates the gradient of it, the slope of it, how steep uh, it is uh, drawn, um, whether it's rising up to the right or falling down to the right. Um, the steepness also is part of its direction. Uh, scalar has no direction. It has only a magnitude. Therefore, uh, it would just be a constant, like three, negative five, one half, et cetera. Uh, and vectors can be labeled in very, a variety of ways. Uh, it could be point using points. So from A to B, this would be a point to point vector. And henceforth, the, uh, the vector would be labeled from A to B where the A is on the left and the B is on the right if the A is the tail and the B is the head of the vector. And using the vector name, we can just call this vector vector A. Uh, to indicate magnitude only, we apply absolute value brackets to the vector name, or actually absolute value brackets would be kind of like the magnitude, kind of magnitude brackets, magnitude symbol. So the magnitude of vector AB is the magnitude of vector AB. So we just put the, the magnitude or the absolute brackets around that, magnitude of vector A would be the magnitude of vector A. Um, for two vectors to be equal, they need to have the same magnitude. Seems like I'm writing this over and over again. And direction. Oops, and half, sorry the same direction. So same slope and same general direction that the, that the uh, vector is pointing in. So here uh, we're gonna identify um, pairs of equal vectors. So take a look at these very carefully and determine which ones have the same magnitude, i.e. the same length, and which ones are pointed in exactly the same direction. So if we carefully examine these, we can see that vector CD is equal to vector NM. And notice that 
they're listed in the correct direction from tail to head. From C to D is vector CD, from N to M is vector NM. And then we also have vector A equal to vector EF. Okay, because they've got the same direction, same gradient, and they're pointing in this, and they've got the same uh, magnitude. Now we look at um, vector B and C, vector B here and vector C, they seem to have the same gradient, but they're pointing in, in opposite directions. And they also seem to have the same magnitude. Okay. Um, so they have equal magnitudes, as your keen eye would have told you. And equal gradients. Um, but they're in opposite directions. Therefore, vector B uh, does not equal vector C. Um, what we can say is if they're in opposite directions, vector B is equal to negative vector C. And um, if their vectors are in opposite directions, they're actually called opposite vectors, where they have the same magnitude and the same gradient or the same slope, but they're in opposite directions. Therefore, we've got that negative symbol there to indicate that. So if we look at this, these two vectors here, we've got vector PQ and vector FG. Well, PQ uh, is opposite. I guess I could have said is in there, so I'll move this over is opposite. So they have the same magnitude and they've got the same slope or the same gradient, but they're pointing in opposite directions. So PQ is actually equal to negative vector FG. So I guess I should be saying vector PQ is equal to negative vector FG. But if we were to turn vector FG around, to point it in the same direction of vector PQ, the points themselves stay where they are. So this vector is just going from point F to point G. If we turn the vector around, it's then going from point G to point F. So vector PQ is then equal to vector GF. And GF is the opposite of vector FG. So the negative sign will turn a vector around or if, if there is a negative vector and you make it positive, that will also turn the vector around to point in the opposite direction. Uh, cardinal directions and bearing. Um, remember, never eat salty worms, unless, of course, you like salt on them. Um, and so um, generally directions are given um, between principal directions. So maybe the north would be mentioned first and then the number of degrees towards the east or the west would be given um, or south might be directed or mentioned first and then the, the number of degrees east or west from there might be given. There are different ways of doing it, of course. We could be mentioning like if this would be, for example, and maybe I should use an arrow here just to make sure that I'm drawing a straight line. Uh, suppose we do this. Uh, we could say that that is north, uh, let's say 25 degrees east. We could also state that as 25 degrees east of north. Um, now, less uh, I, I'm not a big fan of saying east first, but you could then you could say east uh, 65 degrees north. I'm I'm more of the mind of of writing the north or south first and then going east or west from there. Um, and then of course for a cardinal bearing, we could say that this is just uh, on a bearing of zero to five degrees. Okay, bearings are written with three 
uh, three digits in them. Okay. Um, so if we um, if we're looking at uh, directions south, 27 degrees east, that is 27 degrees east of south. Uh, so when we're drawing that, we begin with a vector pointing south. So this is just kind of how I how I set it up. Uh, let's use mauve this time. So I'm going to start with, um, we're going to be starting south. Uh, that's the starting point. And then from there, once we're starting south, then we go 27 degrees east. So we then rotate it 27 degrees and you try to get as close as you can to 27. If we know that this is about 45, halfway through that 90 degree sector, that's about 45, that's halfway. So half of that-ish would be about 27. So I'll just say that that would be 27 degrees in there. And I will indicate that. So I would say this in here, this arc here is 27 degrees. Therefore, this is south 27 degrees east. Okay. Uh, again, it could be stated as um, 27 degrees east of south. Um, and then the other way, which I'm not a big fan of, east, uh, what's that, 63? 63 degrees south. Uh, and then as a bearing, now the bearing starts from, from true north. And so that would be the bearing of that, of that angle. Um, and that would be, was that 180 minus 27? So that would be 100 and uh, 53 degrees, I believe. Okay, so that's how we would locate that. Um, that angle there. Um, I've already mentioned this, all true or azimuth bearings um, are, they start being measured from uh, true north. And we go green in this case. So the bearing of zero degrees or zero, zero, zero degrees is directly north. Um, bearing of 110 degrees would be 20 degrees uh, past 90 and it and the rotation is always clockwise so it goes down to 90 and then about 20 degrees below 90 so around there a bearing of 260 degrees again we start at true north and then we rotate clockwise down to 90 degrees and then we continue down to 180 degrees and if we continued up here we would get to 270 so it's a little bit less, it's 10 degrees shy of getting to 270. So that would be those bearings there. So this is a bearing of zero degrees. This is a bearing of 110 degrees. And this is a bearing of 260 degrees. Um, now we want to just kind of um, practice uh, drawing these vectors here. So what I'd like you to do is please pause the video. And so we want to start off, sorry, before we pause the video, um, start off by drawing a little Cartesian plane here, compass rows, um, and do the same thing for both of these. And then from here we can get our, our get around to uh, practice and drawing these vectors. Um, just be careful about this word "from" because um, that's very important in terms of wind direction. So please pause the video now and practice uh, drawing these uh, vectors, and they should be ser fairly proportional. The vector for the 55 kilometer hour wind should not be the same length as the vector for the 350 kilometer an hour plane. Okay, so um, 
make it fairly reasonably um, proportional so that uh, your scale diagrams or your close to scale diagrams don't throw off your thinking eventually. Okay, so pause now and check back with my solution. So you've had a chance to draw these graphs, these uh, vectors. And so I'll start the wind, I guess maybe wind might be this light blue, sure. Uh, and choose that color. So it's 350 kilometers north, 30 degrees west. So north and then 30 degrees west would be about a third, a third of this 90 degree sector. So it's gonna be a third of the way this way. I will extend that around like this. I should have probably uh, lowered that compass rose a little bit further. Uh, and so then this is 30 degrees in here. And so that would be the plane flying 350 kilometers an hour north, 30 degrees west. Now, wind blowing 55 kilometers an hour from south, 60 degrees west. Uh, What's one thing that we do um, here is we um, draw the uh, in, in, sorry any time the wind is mentioned it's from that direction. So if you hear ever on the news or the weather they talk about oh the westerly winds is from the west a northerly wind the cold north wind is from the north. Okay, so anytime wind is mentioned, it's from that direction. Okay, even if it doesn't say from, it's always from that direction. So first of all, we set up south 60 degrees west. So south 60 degrees west is around here, and it's from that direction. So then the arrow that you, you want to draw then is in line with that, but going in the opposite direction. So it's from this direction. So it's going in that direction like that. Okay, try to get it right on the, the axis there, right in the origin, maybe I'll drop this down a bit here. Makes it a little bit better. Um, and so then this is your wind, your wind vector of 55 kilometers an hour. And this is your plane vector over here of 350 kilometers per hour. Okay, and, oh, two boats starting at the same dock. First heading 25 degrees north of east and the second heading east 40 degrees south. So here's that notation I'm not a fan of, but it is still valid. So don't, uh, don't count it out. Um, so I'll draw a, a dock in kind of rough. Here's a dock. Uh, so we got a boat and it is heading, we'll do the orange boat. The boat is heading uh, 25 north of east. So we're heading east first and 25 degrees north of that. So I'm just going to increase that about 25 degrees and maybe just for guidance, I'll add, I'll add a little marker there so we can kind of judge where north, south, and east are. And then the second, uh, the second boat is going east, 40 degrees south. So it's gonna be going about halfway there, a little bit shorter than halfway. Okay, um, now notice that they don't have any speeds uh, mentioned here. So we just need to kind of draw in the, uh, the angles. So that is the 25 degrees. And then this here is the 40 degrees.
And then the superhero flying 680 kilometers an hour with a bearing of 027, and his or her arch nemesis flying 720 kilometers an hour with a bearing of 310. So if we're gonna put them sort of together, um, I mean, they could be flying from the same, um, this from the same starting point, if you wish, or we can sort of have them heading off in order to uh, intercept each other. Um, so you sort of have to plan where you want these, uh, where you want them to be flying. Um, so bearing of 27, and those kind of up to the right, and the arch nemesis would be on a bearing of 310, which would be kind of up to the left. So I'm going to start the our superhero from here, and superhero will be re wearing red today, and so it's going to be going 680 kilometers on a bearing of 27 degrees, which would be around maybe around a third of that that arc. Okay, so right here, this arc right there is 27 degrees. And I know it's from north because that's, uh, the bearing has three digits here. And then the, uh, the nemesis, of course there, there's always a nemesis. Um, let's say it's starting right here-ish. And the nemesis will be wearing black, of course. And it's going uh, 720, 310 degrees. So that's, of course, an, a bearing. So it goes 90 degrees, then around to 180, then to 70, and then 40 degrees above that. So I'm going to go like this ish it'll be around there like that and so then this is the bearing of 310 degrees okay so they're going to be sort of intercepting each other if you really look at it in that way okay so that is it for the beginnings of vectors uh, here's a little bit of practice for you um, and so thanks for watching and we'll see you in class.